In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. From Luke 17, pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. Jesus is speaking to his followers and he says, pay attention to yourselves. Now, technically speaking, he employs an imperative there, which means he's giving a command, which means you as his follower don't have a choice. You have to pay attention to yourself. So pay attention to yourself, to your thoughts, to your reactions, to your likes, to your dislikes, your agreements, your disagreements as Jesus speaks to you. Pay attention to yourself. You ready? All right, let's go. Paying attention to yourselves, Jesus says to you, if your brother sins, rebuke him. Fascinating on so many levels. Because Jesus isn't talking about the general population. He's not talking about society at large. He's not talking about your neighbor. He's not talking about your relatives, although they may be included. And he is not talking about the people over there that you don't care for. He's talking about your fellow Christ follower. That's your brother. That's who he's talking about. So it's your brother to whom we're looking at. Jesus says, if your brother sins, fascinating. He doesn't say that your brother has to sin against you. Just that if your brother sins. And then he doesn't bother to define what kind of sin. This could be a sin of thought, word, or deed. This could be a sin against the first three commandments. It could be a sin against the last three commandments. This could be a sin of omission or commission. This could be a sin of passion. It could be a sin of accident. It could be a mortal sin. It could be a venial sin. It doesn't matter. It's just that your brother has sinned. And Jesus says that when he sins, you are to rebuke him. Now, let's pause for a second and make sure we understand what Jesus is saying. So often when we hear the word rebuke, we kind of get this idea that now it is time to bring the hammer down. I have to find the most harsh language I own in order to rebuke my brother in their sin. It's not actually fully capturing what it is that Jesus is saying. When he says you are to rebuke your brother, he is saying in a gentle, yet frank and earnest way, you point out your brother's fault. You go to him and say, you have sinned. Here is the sin. Here's why it's a sin. You do this in much the same manner that Nathan did when David sinned committing adultery with Bathsheba. And he confronted David with that story of the rich man and the poor man and the ewe lamb. And he pointed out to David that he was the man who sinned in that fashion. Or like when Paul confronted Peter. Peter had been eating with Gentiles, no problem. But then the circumcision party came along and said, you can't do that because they're not circumcised, so they're not Christians. And Peter withdrew from them. And Paul went to him and said, no, Peter, that's not how we do things. You need to get back with those people. So there you have it. If your brother sins, rebuke him. Now, paying attention to yourselves, what do you think about that? How often does that go down? See, one of the things that happens is when your brother sins, so often you conclude, that is my brother's business. Who am I to get involved? Who am I to judge? Who am I to say anything to my brother when they sit? Well, pay attention to yourselves. You are that person's brother. You are there to assist them in their Christian walk. You are there to help them along. Because whenever your brother sins, the whole body of Christ suffers. It's like when you stub your little toe against the bureau at night. It's not just the little toe that suffers. It's your whole body that suffers when that happens. 
So when your brother sins, you are to go to him and you are to rebuke him. You're to rebuke him so that he comes to repentance. And that's another thing to pay attention to yourself about. Your brother sins, you point it out to them, you rebuke them. And then they're supposed to go, you're right, I've sinned. The word of God has worked in their hearts. They understand this. I've sinned against God. I repent. And then Jesus says, you are to forgive them. Now, as you pay attention to yourselves, how often does that really happen? So often when someone sins and you rebuke them and they repent, the response is something along the lines of, it's okay, man. We all sin. I sin, you sin. Or, ah, don't worry about it. Just, just forget about the whole thing. Pious platitudes that offer zero comfort to the repentant sinner. When you look at somebody and they confess that they have sinned and they are repenting of their sin, and you say to them, don't worry about it, forget about it, you're saying, don't worry about your sin, forget about your sin, your sin's not important, you shouldn't worry about it. I mean, where's that nonsense found in Holy Scripture? No place. Instead, you are to forgive them in Jesus' name. Now, I know as you pay attention to yourselves, you sit there and say, who am I to forgive sins? Isn't that the pastor's job? Well, you again are their brother. You are one on whom Jesus has given the Holy Spirit and said, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. So it has been given to you to forgive sins when someone repents to you. Forgive them their sins, even when it gets absolutely ridiculous. Jesus says, if your brother sins against you, now we're looking at you, seven times in the day and turns to you seven times and say, I repent, you must forgive him. Now, as you pay attention to yourselves, what do you think about that? What are your thoughts and reactions? Well, so often, if your brother sins against you and repents, great. That's, that's a wonderful thing. But if my brother sins against me seven times in one day, and you're enough of a Bible scholar to know that seven is a number of completion, so we're not really talking about seven literal times, but like as many times in the day that he sins against you, he comes and asks for forgiveness. Then you start saying, this is getting a bit ridiculous. I mean, this is like infinite forgiveness, but I don't have infinite patience. When someone sins against me numerous times and comes to me again and again asking for forgiveness, I begin to question the sincerity of their repentance. And I begin to question the sincerity of their heart. I don't question the fact that they're a sinner and that they're out to get me. That part I understand fully, but I mean, this gets a little out of hand, doesn't it? to forgive them every time they come to you repenting? Well, no. Because the point that Jesus is making is that forgiven people forgive. Consider this. You all have one brother against whom you sin. You sin against him in your thoughts, your words, your deeds, sins of omission, sins of commission, mortal sins, venial sins, sins of passion, sins of accident. You sin against this brother. And on a good day, maybe you only sin against him seven times. But you sin against him over and over and over again. And as the psalmist says, who can discern his errors? And so he comes to you and he rebukes you through the word of God. And you come to repentance. And you turn to him and say, forgive me. And he looks at you and he shows you his nail-pierced hands. And he says, I forgive you. He shows you the hole in his side and the nail piercings in his feet. And he says, I forgive you. 
He doesn't say, it's okay. He doesn't say, oh, forget about it. He doesn't say, oh, don't worry. He says, I forgive you because he's your brother who loves you so much that he took all of your sins, thought, word, deed, omission, commission, mortal, venial, by accident, out of passion, whatever the sin is, he took them all to Calvary's cross. And there he died in your place to pay the penalty for your sins. And he took your sins and buried them in his tomb and rose again on the third day to bring you forgiveness of sins. And he brings that to you through the words of absolution, and through the preaching and reading of his word, and through holy baptism, and through the body and blood for the bread and the wine and the holy communion. He brings that to you and says, I forgive you. For as many times as you have sinned against me, I forgive you. For as many times as you will sin against me, I forgive you. The forgiveness of Christ Jesus knows no bounds. It doesn't set a limit on you. And that forgiveness has been given to you. It's been poured into your heart and into your life such that you have all that you need when a brother sins to rebuke them and when a brother repents to forgive them. And when it gets crazy and the brother sins against you over and over and over again, to forgive them over and over and over again because that's the life of brothers, brothers who are forgiven, who forgive one another. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.